Okay, so we'll do our sample case now for you guys. I'll get my timer out, but I'll, I'll first just read it. Uh, just this is just the case that you know Eric and I made up, um, basically going off of what what Capper has listed on their website. Um, so Derek Schmidt, 35 year old male. Uh, Derek is an electrician and has been having significant difficulty with overhead movements over the past three and a half weeks. Upon physical examination, you note that his abduction and flexion, active range of motion, are both limited at 90 degrees. Uh, you conclude that he's experiencing left subacromial impingement syndrome. <clears throat> so now the task is teach this client two appropriate exercises to improve range of motion. You will have the following props available to you in the station, a broomstick, okay? Let me just get everything situated. All right, Eric, you're, you're good to go. Or sorry, Derek, you're good to go? Yes, I'm absolutely ready. <laughs> All right, I'll start this. So I'll just, I'll just start, okay? Hey, Derek Schmidt? Yes. How's it going today? I'm good. Good, good. My name's Anthony Pinto de Costa. I'm a registered physiotherapist here in the clinic. I was just reading your chart out there. I see that you've recently been having some left shoulder pain. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, gotcha. And it's most limited when you put your arm out to the side and through the front. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Okay, gotcha. Thanks for confirming that for me. So I'll tell you what, what we're going to do today is I'm actually going to teach you a couple exercises to help you improve that range of motion and also help you with your pain control as well. Okay. If you have any pain or discomfort as we do this, please let me know and we can modify it from there. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Do you have any questions before we begin? No. Nope. And you're not in any pain or discomfort before we begin? No, nope, I'm okay. Excellent. Okay. So what I'm going to get you to do, I'm going to get you to stand and I want you to be far enough from your camera so that I can see um, you basically your knees and up if that's possible. Okay. And I'm going to get you to grab that stick in the room there as well. Okay. So first things first, I'm going to get you to hold the stick like this. Okay. So left hand is going to be facing towards the screen. The right hand is going to be facing towards your body. Okay. Okay. Sound good. Okay. Now what I'm going to get you to do is we're actually going to move this stick up to the left like that. And the left hand is just coming along for the ride while the right hand is, is basically driving it up like that. Okay. And I want you to go just below your level. Can you give that a go for me? Okay. Okay. So I'm going to stop you right there, Eric. Um, your hand placement is really, really good. But what I need you to adjust is how your body's moving. Okay. So what I saw from you is that you're turning your body like this. I need you to keep your body straight and I need you to go up just like this with the arms. Can you do that for me? Oh, okay. Yep. Perfect. Any pain with that, Eric? Yes, I'm there. Okay. So what I want you to do when you do that, go just below that pain. Okay. I don't want you to push into pain. Can you give that another go there? Okay. Perfect. And then back. Okay. Down. Good. Awesome. So do you feel confident that you'd be able to do three sets of 10 of that every day? I think so. Yes. Awesome. Okay. So that's the first exercise. I'm going to teach you the second one now. Okay. So same thing, same hand placement, okay? You're gonna be like this, but now we're gonna point the stick towards the screen like so, okay? Left hand is gonna be in front. Perfect, okay? Same thing, right hand is gonna drive. You're gonna go up through the front like that and then back down. Repeat that and make sure you're staying below your level of pain, okay? Okay. Can you give that a go? Yeah. Perfect, any pain with that, Eric? Just starting there. Starting there. Okay. So remember, stay just below that. Okay. 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 And you look pretty good. Shoulders are square. You're, you're moving it uh, the way you should be. I, I like how that looks. Can you do one more for me? Should I do it again? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. No pain there. No, that was good. Excellent. All right. So again, do you feel confident that you could do three sets of 10 repetitions of this as well? Yeah, I think so. Every day. Every day, yes. Excellent, perfect. Okay, so you can put the stick to the side there and I'll get you to sit back where, uh, where we started here. Okay. So do you have any questions about uh, any of those exercises that we did today? 
Um, no, that was good. Perfect. All right. So um, just to summarize what we did today, I taught you a couple exercises just to help you improve your range of motion and improve uh, your pain. Uh, what we'll get you to do is I'll get you to book in a week's time just so that we can see how you're progressing uh, through your plan of care and then, you know, continue to progress you from there. All right. Okay. Thank you. All right. Perfect. If you don't have any other questions, once again, my name is Anthony Pizzo I'm a registered physiotherapist here at the clinic and I'll see you again in a week's time. Okay. Thanks, Anthony. Perfect. So if we look at the timer here, it was about four minutes and uh, 19 seconds. But uh, yeah, that's how we kind of think how uh, these scenarios will go, you know, making sure that you're checking in with the patient and uh, teaching them the appropriate exercises, not doing anything else out of what's asked. And the, probably the only point I'm going to jump in there for a second, Anthony, but for those of you who might be thinking, you know, Eric was awfully mundane during that. He, he did, really didn't give a lot of expression. It was sort of yes and no answers. That is generically how 99% of all of the um, preempted patients behave. They don't add a lot of commentary um, shy of, you know, perhaps once there's once or twice we've seen ones where patients are easily distracted and try to change the topic and you need to redirect them, um, which is a deliberate ploy or a deliberate piece that they want to use to see that you can, you know, keep the, the, the task on hand. But other than that, that is very much how many patients will behave in those stations. They're very straightforward. They'll answer yeses and nos. If they've been prompted to ask a question, they will ask a question, provided you provide them an opportunity to ask a question. Um, they're not going to be as dynamic as you know a real life uh, engagement, which of course does make behaving like it's a real life engagement a little trickier, but you know they also are being uh, prompted so that they don't inadvertently throw you off and that when they behave and do this many, many, many times over and over for different candidates, the reactions and the feedback is always exactly the same. And that way there is a standardization to the testing. Yeah, for sure. Hit the nail on the head. There's a couple of questions here. Um, <laughs> about doing special tests, about asking if they're doing any current exercises. I'll pass it over to you, but in my experience, this is all about what's being asked of you in the question, which is teach this client two appropriate exercises. Yeah, yeah, I don't think, uh, you know, you have to go into something that's off the cuff like that, like asking about future exercises or doing any other special tests, right? They just said, do these, and that's it. Right. So you just have to assume that that's all you have to do when you get into the station. Yeah, I would agree with that. Yeah. Special tests are especially musculoskeletal special tests are um, not as globally, not, not as globally tested. They're technically still fair game, but they're, they're definitely, it's a very, very, very specific and a very small aspect of the profession. And in addition, it's difficult to determine, you know, the efficacy of the technique being performed. That, that sounds more like something that you'll see when, you know, through the orthopedic division or some additional, like, you know, continuing education courses. Um, you got to remember that this is, this is not specific to, this is supposed to test your ability to work in any environment and not in one small, tiny, little corner of the profession. And so that's why they want to be able to test skill sets that are going to cross domains and cross professions and cross um, subject subjects, sorry, um, content subjects. Yep. Okay. And then, yeah, I guess we'll, we'll wrap up with this. So um, what are some things that PC candidates can do on the day of their exam to ensure success? So uh, this is our test day checklist just to, to wrap up here. Um, so we would say, you know, avoid reviewing last minute material. Like I said earlier, you can study for this thing forever. You're not going to know everything, right? You got to know the most important pertinent things first, those, those big themes versus that minutia. So, you know, don't stress yourself out even more. It's already a stressful day, um, even in the comfort of your, your own home environment. So just push everything to the side. Don't worry about it. Just focus on tackling the exam. 
uh, dress professionally. You know, Eric, Eric said earlier, you know, dress the part, you know, you'll, if you look good, you'll, you'll uh, perform good as well. So, you know, make sure that you're dressing like you're actually going to work. Um, this probably one of the best tips I was also told as well. Don't let your performance on one station affect your performance on the next, right? Just keep moving forward, right? Anything that happened in that last station, it's done now. It's done. There's nothing you can do about it. So it always goes back to just controlling what you can, can control and just keep moving forward, right? It's a new station. The people in the, in the room that you're going to enter, the virtual room that you're going to enter, they don't know what you did on that last station, right? They're just seeing you now for the first time. So just, you know, any, the only thing that should be on your mind is just making that, that good first impression. Uh, next one, Eric alluded to this earlier, just gather and ground yourself, right? There's nothing on the rubric that says you can't say, just let me review your chart quickly, right? Like, like he said earlier too, it's actually encouraged because you don't want to start doing something that may potentially lead to a safety flag or something that you shouldn't do, right? Take a step back. Let me just review your chart, okay? Some, maybe an examiner even asks you, uh, please reread the question. You know, don't see that as a negative thing. Uh, maybe you just misinterpreted what you had to do and they're just trying to redirect you, right? It's actually a positive thing. And that's actually a chance for you to review um, what you have to do on the station as well. A few more points here. So, uh, you know, this, this works for me. Uh, this may not work for everybody, but I find, you know, reading the task, the actual physical thing you have to do before you go into the stations actually, or sorry, before you read the, the case scenario, I think is actually uh, really good for helping me calm my nerves, right? Because I know, you know, I have to teach two exercises. Okay, now let's read the, the case scenario. Sometimes that can put you at ease because now I at least know what I have to do. How the patient presents, I don't know yet, but I'll, I'll just go through that quickly and get all that information, then head into the station and do what I got to do. Yeah, and, and um, sorry, I'm going to interrupt just briefly because yeah. I love that point. And the way they structure the, te the, the question, that, that what you need to do is bolded at the bottom. So it's even easy to locate. Um, but yeah, I, I, like, I really um, support that point from Anthony is that you know, if you look at what you have to do, it instantaneously creates context for whatever it is you're reading, as opposed to you reading the scenario and wondering the entire time, well, there's, there's five, 10 pieces here. What, what part do I have to do? Get to the point, get to the meat of what you have to do and then look at the details around the environment that you have to do it in. So, yeah. Okay. That's a really good point. Yeah. Definitely something that's helped me. So I, I would encourage it if you find that it, it works for you too, but you know, you don't have to. Um, and then last one I'll say, and then I'll let uh, Eric take it away here is just behave as though you're actually practicing seeing a patient. You know, we mentioned this earlier as well too. Um, just don't treat them like they're an actor, like actually treat them like they're one of your patients. Uh, obviously, you know, being in a, in a simulated environment where there's five, 10 minutes for you to do what you got to do. Um, obviously you got to perform a certain way and get your marks and make sure that you're, you're hitting on all those points, but the way you're treating the patient, the way you're conveying yourself, make sure that that's how you would uh, convey yourself in practice. And I think that's why we put asterisks beside these ones, right? These, this, this point you just made, and then the next one, which is do what is asked. So don't bring in additional content and additional information. They've asked you what they want to see, perform what, they, what they've asked you to show. Um, it's pretty much as simple as that. If, given the opportunity, you know, when you are closing, if something about the station doesn't sit right, if you could not remember a point, if you're not sure if you hit all the points, you are allowed at the end as well to take an extra 10 seconds, just review what was asked to be done. And, you know, in your head, make that checklist. Yes, done. Yes, done. Yes, done. Fine. I'm ready to close. There's nothing I'd like to add. And I will complete the station with Q and a slash reintroduction of who I am and thanking them for coming. And above all, because it is a, it's a tough day. Just remember maybe to take a moment and actually breathe. Um, it's interesting how just stopping for one second, just as you're about to start the process and just one big deep breath. It's like any exam, the first station is it's, you just got to get rolling, just about momentum, take a deep breath, get the first station under your belt. And after that, each one after that is going to come easier and easier and easier. And the test will be done before you know it. Okay. No doubt. Yeah. All of it. <laughs>